السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته محاضرتنا اليوم هي symmetrical fault continuing to the part 3 إلى طلاب الجامعة التكنولوجية قسم هندسة الكهروميكانيك فرع الطاقة والطاقات المتجددة للمرحلة الرابعة يقيها على مسار معكم الدكتور غسان عبد الحسين بلال السلطاني So first of all So the fault calculation by using the pass method so if we have an end bus, we're going to extend our study to the previous uh, lecture by calculating the subtransient fault current for three-phase fault by using the bus method. So if we have an end bus system, end bus bar system, so this method, which, which is really important to use it in order to uh, solve the uh, uh, faults, current, and voltages. And the same, the symmetrical fault to the part three to the previous lecture, which is the using formula, and we calculate the fault current and fault level and so on. And now this is different method. We'll give it is going to be give you the same results. I just you to mention this. So the system for this method is a model by positive sequence network where line transformer machine are presented by constant voltage source behind some transient reactors. So for simplicity the, to this method, we're going to neglect the pre fault level currents. Also, if we have an end bar system, so the matrix, the, the, the admitted matrix, is represents for the system like this in this matrix okay so we have a y bus equal to the y11 one one, uh, until to the y and n so if we have the n by m bus power so we can represent it as this admittance matrix so for this admittance matrix we can convert it to the z bus by inverse that y bus so you will get the z bus which is represent the bus bar for the all the network. If you have a, for example, 10 bus bar, you will get the Y bus is a 10 by 10, right? If you have a, a 15, you will get 15 bus bars, and so on so far. Okay, so by versus Y bus, you will get the Z bus, and then from the Z bus, you will calculate the fault current and voltage at each bus bar of the system. This called the bus method. So, for any fault occur at any bus in the system, so we can calculate the voltages and the currents after the fault. So, the this uh, this formula is represent the fault positive uh, the post fault voltages, which is V1 equal V1 naught plus delta V1 whereas the delta V1, 2, 3 is represent the change in bus voltages by the fault. And for this is represent as a pre-fault bus voltage, which is And this voltage on each bus bar represent after which is called post fault voltages. So to simplify the calculation, we neglect the pre-fault dose currents and we assume that all voltages throughout the network are the same and equal to the VF. If we didn't give you the voltages VF in the questions, is represent 1 to the angle 0. So all the voltages on the, on the bus before the fault is equal to the VF, which is 1 to the angle 0. If we don't give you, this is assuming, if we give it to you, limit it to you in the example, in the questions, that you have to not use 1 to the angle 0, you have to use the value that you limited in the questions. So the same formula, previous formula, but we change this to the VF. In general term, the fault current and the voltage, post voltage, is represented in this two formula. This is represent the fault current by uh, this ratio, which is VF over ZKK, and I said the VF is 1 to the angle 0 if we don't give it in the question. If we give it to the questions, you have to use the value that you have it in the questions. Okay? And the ZKK, the KK is represent the pass bars of the of the fault. Okay? So ZKK is represent the impedance of the fault. 
and Vn is represent the voltage on the bus is not half the volt equal the Vf minus Znk over Zkk multiplied by Vf so sometimes you don't need this because it's one to the angle so we neglect it okay so this is two formula so you have to use it in order to calculate the current and the voltage the short circuit current in the following from bus k to the bus m is represented in this formula which is i k m equal v k f minus v m f over z k m okay so let's gonna define the circuit breaker and what does it mean the circuit breaker so the circuit breaker is a machine switching device which automatically opens a circuit under specified abnormal conditions without damage to itself for example we, ha we have a protective device جهاز حماية هذا جهاز حماية ب specified abnormal condition يعني ب محددات أعلى فولتية وأقل فولتية إذا تجاوز ذني ال two limit يعني معناها إنه راح يفصل الجهاز وما يسبب دمج النفس أوكي هذا example بسيط للcircuit breaker موجود بعض الـ important terms uh, that we gonna mention which is maximum symmetrical interrupting capability rated voltage range factor so this is defined is the maximum current which is a breaker must interrupt that mean the formula by K multiplied by short circuit current and then the voltage uh, uh, the voltage range factor is the ratio between the rated maximum voltage over the lower limit of the range operation voltage the third term which is rated maximum voltage is represent the highest root mean square voltage for which the circuit breaker is designed when you design the circuit breaker is represent the highest root mean square uh, voltages is this call the rated interrupting time is the time between the energized strip circuit and the arc extension on an opening operation is the period so the period between these two analogize the system and the arc extension is called rated interrupting time so let's take example of about this form to see how it's going to apply this formula so you have a 69 kilovolt circuit breaker a voltage range 200 ampere and it has a rated short circuit current of 19,000 k8 at maximum rated voltage of 72 uh, 72.5 kV. So determine determine the maximum symmetrical interrupting capability of the circuit breaker, the, the lower limit of operation voltage, the interrupting current of at 66 kV. So we're gonna apply this formula, which is the K multiplied by short circuit. So this is we have it 1.21 multiplied by 19 kV. You will get the symmetrical interrupting capability. So you need the lower limit of the operating voltage by applying this uh, ratio. So we have the K, we have the rated maximum, which is 72.5 in the question given. So you will get this. For the last one is the interrupting current over the 19 K, which is the maximum current equal the maximum voltage over the voltage that you want the interrupting current on it as give it to you here okay so by apply this you will get the interrupting current which is 20.871 ka this is a simple question as the main term that i mentioned that we need to apply the z bus this is the example two is going to represent that the one line diagram of a bar system shown in figure uh, this figure find the fault current and bust Fault voltages if a three phase short circuit occurs at pass 2. Calculate pass 2. Calculate also the current in any part of the network pre fault voltages. So I read all voltages and TRRs on the bus part. It's four passes. So keep in your mind if we have more than three passes, so, so that we're going to provide you the Y bus. If we don't have, if they don't provide you the Y bus. That means we have just two or three buses, so you, you need to grab the value and construct the Y bus from the circuit. Okay? So this is the circuit, and the Y bus is given. And you know, I explained how to uh, get the Y bus in the, uh, in, the, in the previous lectures. Okay? So the mutual, I'm going to go fast. The mutual between bus 1, 2, which is this is represent, this is the Z. You will get 1 over Z, you will get the admittance. 
uh, between itself any any z you will get add them and then uh, convert it to one over z you will get the y bus okay from y bus or this is directly y bus and just grab it put it here to get the z bus okay by invert the z bus is up up to the questions you have to read the question in, in normal in specific and accuracy and don't read it uh, it's very fast okay so the first thing you need to construct the y bus this is represent the system this is your network this is your system so this is the y bus inverse by inverse y bus you will get the z bus so this z bus by using z bus method if we limit you in the question that you have to use the z bus method you're gonna use this if we didn't limit you it's up to you you need to use the z bus method or you need to use the formula before okay so for first you need to calculate the current faulty current which is vf over z22 yz22 because the fault at bus 2 so the the grabbing the voltage from the matrix which is this and the j is 90 so v fault 1 to the angle 0 and this is the impedance from the matrix so you get we will get fault current for the bus voltages on each bus bar you're going to apply the formula which is vn vn bus 1 vf minus zn k n is 1 and k is 2 and zkk which is z22 so you're going to grab this from the matrix and then you're going to apply this you will get the the, the v1 for the v2 uh, while the n is 2 and k is 2 this is 1 and the v1 vf is 1 1 minus 1 is 0 for the v3 you're gonna get z32 over z22 and then you grab, grab this from matrix you will get the voltage on v3 and so on so far for v4 so this is the voltage for v1 to the 4 okay now for the current the full current in a branch connected bus 1 to the 4 so we have a formula, the current between 1 to the 4, which is V1 minus V4 over Z24. This is grabbing from the, from the matrix and the voltage, voltage is grabbing from here. So we have V1 and we have V4. Put it there, you will get the current between 1 4. The current to the fault, which is from bus 1 to the F. Current to the fault means, you know, current to the fault means from the bus to the faulty faulty bus so from the bus is one to the faulty bus is bus two one to two so it's going to be v1 minus v2 over z12 bus three from three to two three two to three z three two four four to two z four to two you have all this value you're going to apply here and you will get the bus voltage uh, current on the bus one three and four so Faulty through impedance. The fault before this the fault is a sole default without the through impedance. Now it's the same formula, previous formula, but we adding a ZF. ZF here to the current and ZF here to the voltage. If you see this is the formula which is adding here ZF and adding here ZF. So this is called uh, the fault throughout the impedance. So we're gonna get example about this. The estimate fold megavolt ampere at bus bar of generating station A is 1500 megavolt, and the fold megavolt ampere at another station B is 200 uh, megavolt ampere. So the generated voltage at each station is 33 kV. So if these stations are interconnected through a a line having reactance of 1 ohm and negligible resistance calculate the possible short circuit megavolt ampere at both stations select 1000 megavolt ampere as a base megavolt ampere so from, from this uh, example we're gonna build the bare unit system so we have station A and station B and this between two stations there is line reactance 1 ohm so we're gonna calculate the bare unit of station A by uh, divide S space over the actual megavolt ampere to the station A, we have a 1500 and the base is 1000, you will get the reactance. And for station B, the same 1000 for 1200 and you will get the reactance. And for the line, 
you have the actual so you need to calculate the base the base how you're gonna calculate it by kv square over s base and you get the base of the line and then divide the actual over the base you will get the per unit of the line so you have this system now is represent in per unit so if the fault here so this is gonna be in series you're gonna see this this is the impedance this is the side of the impedance so you need to calculate the thickening so this is both of them is in series with this in parallel you will get the thickening the thickening of the faulty hair okay from thickening uh, you can calculate the fault megavolt ampere by 1 over x thickening uh, multiplied by the s base you will get the actual if the fault on bus b on station bus b so this is going to be in series with this in parallel so you can see it's going to be in series with this in parallel so you will get the x dividend and by uh, divide the x dividend 1 over the x dividend multiply by s base you will get the fourth megavolt ampere the last example which is the generator station is a lid out as shown in figure this one and the rating and percentage reactance of different elements are indicated if a three-phase short circuit occurs on any feeder near transformer second so you can choose any feeder of these okay so find the short circuit megavolt and bear fit to their fault take five megavolt as the base value so if you remember this is this is the system is a tie system because the feeder with the reactants in barrel connected to the generator to the tie uh, pass that is represent the tie system okay so first of all so you can choose the fault so we choose, choose it here as at this f or you can choose it here or you can choose it up to you so we choose here so we can uh, build the system to get the bare unit system so all the generator is a half a 10 okay and all reactants you have a 10 so you have a mega a 5 megavolt ampere so you're going to divide 5 to over 10 and 5 over there to get the reactants for all generator and all the reactants and for all the transformer is not going to be changed because it's 5 mega and this 5 mega so you're going to calculate this by this okay so you're going to build how you're going to build your this this is with this in uh, in barrel you will see and this is with this in barrel right this both in barrel this both in barrel with this is what in series with this in series so you see this is in series you this is in series both of them in parallel with this in series both of them in parallel with this in series so you will get x7 in by convert this x7 in you will get the 40 megavolt and there thank you so much if you have any question let me know contact me by email by google classroom I hope you to get benefit from this lecture. Thank you.